Okay, welcome back to the Dry Fasting Club, where we fasted so much we've stopped drinking water. I'm Yannick Wolf, and uh, we'll be talking about refeeding today. So the topics that I'll be covering is how to refeed after a dry fast and what to eat. So we'll be talking about what is refeeding, uh, what is refeeding syndrome, how to break a dry fast, uh, what to eat, and then I'll talk a little bit about uh, a three-day and, and shorter dry fast, a five-plus-day dry fast, which would be the prolonged one that some people go on, and uh, we'll finish off with some tips and tricks that I've learned over the years of dry fasting and water fasting. So let's get to it. So what is refeeding? Refeeding is basically what you do uh, after you complete your dry fast and you decide, okay, it's time for me to come back into the world of drinking water and eventually eating. Uh, so refeeding is basically a part that a lot of people do not do properly. Um, some people say that it's actually the hardest part of dry fasting. So after a... Uh, prolonged period of not eating and in dry fasting and not drinking water, uh, you need to kickstart your body and kickstart your digestive system. So obviously with dry fasting, it is a much more uh, hardcore version. So you can imagine that your body actually shuts down even more on a dry fast than it would on a water fast that allows you to continuously still drink water and flushes your system. So if you're dry fasting, you have to remember that your gut bacteria is taking a much bigger hit than it normally would. So refeeding is also something that you need to keep in mind that will affect your gut bacteria more so than other types of fasts. What is the refeeding syndrome? The refeeding syndrome is basically something that's been used throughout the years to kind of scare people off of fasting. So I think the most common example that's used is during World War II when the uh, concentration camp prisoners were freed and given food and snacks. They'd basically... Uh, end up getting extremely sick and a lot of them ended up dying shortly after refeeding. So the refeeding syndrome basically indicates that if you uh, don't refeed correctly and rush it and eat inappropriate things right after a prolonged fast, you can damage your body and in a worst case scenario, die. However, the refeeding syndrome uh, usually occurs with extremely long fasts and Unfortunately, a lot of new fasters think that if they fast for two or three days and then eat incorrectly, they might land in the hospital. That's usually not the case. Uh, and obviously, the younger you are and the more healthy you are, the easier it is to just, to just jump back into eating. Uh, the refeeding syndrome is basically a shift in fluids and electrolytes. Uh, often occurs in malnourished patients receiving a new source of food. So basically, uh, you want to be aware that your electrolytes are important. Uh, in a dry fast, however, the body does create a good balance for your electrolytes. So if you do read about uh, the recommendations from some dry fasting experts, they actually say that you should avoid salts when you break your fast. So that's something to, to consider for the first few days. You don't want to start drinking your snake juice or downing the uh, potassium, sodium, uh, baking soda right after it. You want to take it very easy. So if you're breaking the fast, what should you eat and how should you do it? So the idea here is that you want to focus on eating small amounts of food and water. If you are breaking a dry fast, the first thing that you need to do is introduce water back into the body. Ideally, you're using a clean water source. Uh, a mineral water would be great. And you want to start with just a little, a few sips of water every few hours and slowly move on from there. A very popular secondary step is going into something like bone broth. Some people like to go into 
diluted fruit juices. And then some other people recommend going for something like very small amounts of cereal. So think oatmeal gruel mixed with water and you want it to be mainly water and very little amounts of actual food. So super diluted, tastes like crap, but that's how you want to start and you want to keep ramping up your food intake. An easy way to just remember and to keep track of this is to basically eat from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. every three hours, approximately 200 grams of food and water at a time. And when you start on the first day, you want it super diluted. And then as it progresses, you keep those same amounts of food. So think 200 grams at a time. But this, t- but with every passing day, you can basically uh, up the amount, the nutritional density. So if you're diluting with four cups of water, the next day you dilute it with three cups of water and you put in a little bit more uh, of the actual food. And then two cups of water, one cup of water, and then you go to like a normal bowl of oatmeal or on the fifth day you'll go for a non-diluted fruit juice or whatever else you choose such as bone broth um if you are doing a three-day fast or shorter that is considered a pretty short fast your body does not go into total shutdown it is much easier to just jump back into eating food it It's highly advisable to still start with the same steps. You want to start with water. You want to move on to something like diluted bone broth, uh, fruit juices, uh, and you want to scale it up. Ideally, you want to extend your refeeding period as long as possible because your body is still healing. But with such a short fast, you don't really have to worry too much about the refeeding syndrome. If you're getting to five days and up, you are entering a really long, prolonged dry fast. This is where you need to start taking it much more seriously. When you are refeeding after such a long fast, you do need to follow a strategy. One that is very popular right now is starting with water and moving on to bone broth after 12 to 24 hours continuing on bone broth with no added salts or minerals for another 24 hours before adding things like cucumbers, which are very popular and a good source of potassium, um, highly digestible. And then a popular addition after that is kefir or kefir. And that is a uh, milk product where the uh, bacteria digest it. And then it is very easily uh, digestible by the body and then you scale up from there um a very good way to think about what to eat there is uh focus on a keto style diet um yeah so a few other tips and tricks that basically i've learned over the years is when you're refeeding it's hard to eat controlled portions so being aware that there's going to be an urge is very important because if you're aware of it, it's not going to win the battle. You're, you're going to approach it and you're going to know that it's coming and you're going to be able to fight it off. You basically have to control your urges because once you start eating the bone broth and you get your first cucumber, your body starts to really crave food and it's you're going to start making excuses that oh i've already eaten this and that and oh it's been 24 hours maybe i can add this and you start to gorge on food so remember the most healing is done during the refeeding section and you have to control your urges and you have to maintain small amounts of food and slowly scale up you want to also fight the urge to eat unhealthy food once you start eating you start craving more and more and you especially if you're around other people that are eating you're going to try and start eating slightly more unhealthy foods uh it's very important that you focus on healthy refeeding uh, because at the same time you are recalibrating your gut bacteria and you want them to favor healthy foods if you start eating things that are unhealthy especially during the refeeding period 
you're going to crave them more and more after your fast and you'll end up in the same place or even worse than before you started the fast. A good rule of thumb is also to try and eat keto during the refeed and afterwards. Keto is a a very healthy way of eating. Um, It's an easy way to eat healthy and still eat tasty food. So that's something you can definitely look into. Uh, I am a fan of a varied diet, uh, but I do focus on keto. Okay, and finally, it's also important to recognize that Dr. Filinov also says to not have salt during the first day or two of the refeed. Uh, This is this goes directly against um, very popular advice from people like Cole Robinson with the snake juice fasting and other people that think that the moment you break the fast, you need to have baking soda to combat the acid in your body and basically start drinking electrolytes right away. So these uh, guys have been doing it for 30 years in Russia actually recommend to avoid salt, which is very interesting. And that's what I've been trying to do recently. And I think that it has a better uh, healing effect. So what I'll do is for the first day or two of refeeding where I'm doing bone broth and water, I will not salt it. Or I will not add potassium or anything to it. But then on the third and fourth day, I start uh, supplementing with something similar to snake juice. That's pretty good. And you have to. OK, so there was one more thing that I wanted to add. There was a great study on uh healthy adults for five days of dry fasting. I'll link it in the video below. Um, And it basically says that the researchers found that the body was able to put their levels of sodium and potassium into equilibrium. So basically electrolyte balance is kept by the body during the dry fast, which is crazy because the opposite is shown during water fasting when you're flushing out your electrolytes. So this works hand in hand from what the uh, Russian uh, dry fasters were actually talking about, because if they're saying don't have salt and this, this study is showing that your body is keeping it in equilibrium, it makes sense that you do not need to rush with the electrolytes right after a uh, dry fast. All right, so that's it for today's video on refeeding. I uh, just wanted to remind you that if you are considering to dry fast and want to find a community of dry fasters with that they can help you with questions, anything that uh, that pops into your mind, join our Discord group. The link will be down below. That's the Dry Fasting Club. Just so you know, dry fasters are extremely experienced fasters. Usually every single dry faster has already gone through years of water fasting and countless years of intermittent intermittent fasting, OMAD, and all of that. So I can't think of a better group to join if you have any questions or if you're a dry faster and just want to join some like-minded people. Link will be down below, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye now.